um, so I'm going to introduce him. It's Ian Christie. Um, he was the co is currently the co-founder of FinSelect, uh, financial crime career consultancy. Um, he's also a former partner at Investigo, um, former business director uh, at Michael Page, a former manager at um, Lees, um, and, and he was also a former team leader at, at Grant as well. So welcome, um, Ian, to the call. Ian, are you there? I am indeed. Hello, everybody. Pleasure to meet you all. So, hello, um, Ian. Hello, Ian. Hey, guys. The reason why I brought Ian on the call um, today is so Ian can actually answer all your questions regarding um, career in terms of um, um, KYC, financial crime, how you can progress. So we've got a couple of questions that I'll be engaging Ian with. And at the end of these questions, I will open up the floor for you to ask any other question that you think we did not cover. Yeah. Ian, are you fine with me to engage you on that one? I am more than happy. And uh, yeah, so I've got a few things I want to say at the end and offer out. So, but we'll get there when we get there. Let's go. All right. <laughs> All right. Brilliant. Thanks. So, so we would start a, a session. With <laughs> ask Ian. I love it. <laughs> so our first question to you will be, um, tell us about yourself, Ian. Absolutely. Well, first thing, like I said, lovely to meet you all. So, um, start up, I'm 38 years old. I moved over to London eight years ago. I graduated, well, I should say I failed university, walked out, <laughs> but hey-ho. Um, joined Grant Thornton at the age of 22, trying to pursue a career in accountancy. I continued doing that for about eight years and then just decided it really wasn't for me any further. So I moved over to London and I started the job as a recruiter um, and joined the wide world, wide world of financial crime recruitment. And I've been doing that for the past eight years. Um, I'm sure maybe as you've seen in the job titles, I've worked in three different companies. So in Michael Page, I did six years. Um, loved Michael Page, brilliant organization. It was, kind of went in as a bit of an entry level and worked my way through to director. Got promoted into a new job at Investigo, just changed jobs, was a partner in there, which is a, a bit more of a smaller recruitment agency. And then four weeks ago, I started my own business um, with my business partner, Jessica Hodson. And so we've been operating for four weeks now and seems to be going really, really well. So that's a wee yes. bit about me. On the personal life, still single, living over in Wapping, play football, um, love Marvel movies as well. Bit of a nerd, probably about enough on me. <laughs> only you can tell, only can tell you more. Yeah. Are you still in kickboxing? I'm still, yeah, I'm still, I'm still a field boxer. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Put up to okay. the boxing ring every Saturday and get treated like a whipping bag by my compatriots. Yep, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'll go into the next question, which is much more of a KYC focus. Um, someone mm -hmm. has asked us in the past and asked, um, how do I start a career in KYC? It's a really good question. Yeah. So, um, Oli, is it fair for me to assume that um, this would be everybody's first role? Yeah? How no, do you... So we have some people on the call who are quite experienced. Some people are not. Um, some people are Coming starting... in with experience, yeah? Some of right, them is cool. Yeah. Right. Well, KY, for, for K, KYC, um, how do you get into it? So it's really, it's actually really straightforward. So the first role that you want to channel yourself into is that the initial stages of KYC, which is really client onboarding, customer onboarding, right? So if we use the example of a bank, right? Anytime you go to set up an account with them, it's either a person or maybe a company, your job is basically to confirm who they say they are. So like I've said there, you do the the IDV, and then conduct screening on them, right? Make sure that they're, they're not illegal, there's no adverse news, they're not politically exposed, right? And that's yeah. the first thing that you would do. So that's the initial job, the entry level role that you would want to do to start out your career in KYC. And that's where nearly everybody would commence. And that would be my recommendation to anyone as well. Okay, <clears throat> brilliant. So the next question here yeah, would be, what does the market look like for KYC analysts? Yeah. So at present, it's um, from what and from work just just leaving a large recruitment firm. KYC is without doubt the one of the busiest markets uh, in, throughout the UK, right? 
Um, any bank, you look at all the different types, and I, I only cover financial services. And when you look at the different types of entities that exist within financial services, you've got banks, you've got fintech banks, you've got fintech payments platforms, asset managers, right? Every yeah. single one of them has a large team of KYC people. They are designated to ensure that the institution's protected, right? And they need them there in order to do onboarding. They also need a group of people to do periodic review. And then whenever it goes wrong, they also need a group of people there to pile in to do remediation. So yeah. throughout the UK, there's always ongoing roles for the KYC analyst. You've um, sure we've been watching the sad news recently about the, <laughs> the Russian-Ukraine incident and sanctions imposed on Russia. So yeah. even just from that, I've had a phone call um, just two weeks ago asking me to get ready to supply 100 analysts to two different companies, okay? And that's the kind of levels in which that's just two companies, their requirement. You're talking hundreds and hundreds of different companies will have kind of the same programs going on, okay? So in terms of the market for KYC, it's, it's, all, it's, it's, it's good to assume that there's always rules, okay? And I can't stress that enough. That's the, that's the mindset that you have to have, okay? Yeah, brilliant. So just on the back of that, though, since you said you mentioned it yourself, not me, you said you've got 100 roles coming up. Is it something yeah. that you can offer us to roll on this call? Is that what, sorry? I said, can you, can you look into something because it's like, a, like to offer majority of the guys on the call that are quite looking for roles? Is this something that you'll be open to? Look so at it's, believe it or not, it's something I'm going to, well, I, I guess we can touch on it now. I think as a gesture, a good goodwill what i'd actually like to do for everyone on the call is if i can get your email addresses what would be quite nice is to arrange maybe 20 to 30 minute calls with each of you in order yeah. to one teach you exactly what i'm going to be talking about in the remainder of the questions and then also discuss the roles that i've got going because there will be opportunities for entry level now, i can't yeah. promise everyone a role but i can definitely put you in the right direction in terms of how to go about getting a role. And yes, there will be opportunities for you within those programs, but I can't promise anything, but yes, and that's why, what I would like to try and do for each of you. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. So, okay. The next question then, um, what does the future of the KYC analyst look like? Yeah. So if I get into KYC, oh. what does it look yeah. like? Yeah. So, the future of KYC, so there's no, back in the day, Olu, whenever you were just doing KYC, it was very, very manual, right? You did your, your searches, your investigations, the systems weren't quite as slick as what they are. Yeah, I'm sure you've noticed the change throughout time, and um, the moving into the fintech sector especially, where systems are doing a lot of the work that the human used to do, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what that's left is, what hiring managers want to see from people my is they want someone like and i've written there genuine care about kyc yes that that's true to an extent but they want someone who really really cares about doing financial crime has a passion for it and they're going to show why right so that's the first thing yeah. they want to see someone with a genuine passion almost borderline like a nosy human being who wants <laughs> to do investigations right yeah. And then the future for once you've done your KYC, once you've done your client onboarding, once you've moved into doing more KYC and um, you've done the, the CDD level, you move yeah. up to the high risk stuff. You move on to EDD, okay? That's yeah. the goal. All, the goal for everyone has to be to get the EDD as quickly as you can because that's where you see the real tricky stuff, right? That's the interesting stuff, right? The high risk, the high risk uh, companies, the entities that you look at operating in high risk jurisdictions, yeah. sanction-based entities, and that's where you make tricky decisions. And then your career path, um, just like anywhere, really. So you can go down the management route if you feel that's for you. Management's not for everyone. Everyone might want to have a go at it, but what you might discover is that you're more comfortable going down the technical specialist or the, the SME, as they like to call it over here. Yeah. Now, both roles have indiv like individual merits, okay? Management's more obvious, right? You've got more time for people. You like to see people's development. You want to make sure that you're, you're moving. Your, your own progression is based on your team's performance, right? So that's about how do I get the best out of my people. You'll love training. You'll love development, et cetera. And, but you, you, that might mean that maybe, maybe you devote your life 
being KYC to the future of head of KYC. The yeah. SME route, that'll probably lead you more towards what's called the second line, where you'll be an advisory, you'll be writing yeah. policies around financial crime with the goal of uh, being like Olu and um, being, <laughs> being an MLRO, right? Yeah. <laughs> Which is what the, probably the highest risk job in the institution. Or, well, for me, it is anyway. And that's, yep. uh, that's the general career path. Yep, brilliant. Thank you very much, um, Ian. Um, so another question that we've got is, um, what are my chances of getting a job in KYC as a fresh graduate? I know you already touched on this. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. uh, this is just in a different format to say, uh, yeah. what are my chances you know, to get into a job if I'm a fresh graduate? Yeah. Um, so comp your competition's fierce, okay? There's a lot of people want to get into KYC. A lot of people have different ambitions of why they want to get into KYC, and that is based on maybe they want to use KYC to get towards the second line, okay? However, it doesn't change anything. The competition's fierce. So well, the first thing you've got to think of is, okay, how am I going to set myself apart from everybody else? Well, I can't, I can't um, stress this enough. Do, do qualification. All right, there's two crack, there's two um, good examining bodies that have written there, ICA and ACAMS, okay? Picking up any qualifications that you can get throughout those two bodies and having them on your resume will make you extremely attractive to a hiring manager, okay? Yeah. Uh, most of the searches I get asked to do is they'll, uh, they'll, be, they'll be looking for that, okay? And then the next, the one I've got up top is how, how, you, how you would go about getting the role. And you need to build your network, okay? You want to surround yeah. yourself with good recruiters. You want to use LinkedIn and build up your network of hiring managers. So that means picking maybe 20 companies, 20 banks, 20 fintechs, doesn't matter, right? Well, I, I, there's some things I'm going to do with each of you individually anyway um, and how to do that. But you want to connect with those hiring managers on LinkedIn. So you need to build a great LinkedIn portfolio for your, sorry, a great LinkedIn profile for yourself. Okay, and then once you've done those connections, um, this is the fun part. This is where you send messages to them all directly, right? It's your job search. You want to get the role, right? So how are you going to show them that you're hungry? Get in contact with them. Send them messages. I'd love to meet with you. I really want to get into KYC. Okay, and then you do your you do your own recruitment. So it's a two pronged approach. Surround yourself with great recruiters. Rely on them, but also get hungry. Use LinkedIn. Send messages out yourself and become your own recruiter. All right, you go from both angles. Um, through both of those channels, you will get a job. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Ian. Yep. Um, so another question is, um, why don't recruiter respond to, respond to my email job application? You know, this person yep. um, sent uh, a context around it to say, I send emails to multiple um, recruiters, but they just don't respond to it. What would you say? Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, am, am I guilty of it? Yes. Yeah, I try not to be 100%, okay? So I like to think that I eventually get back to everybody, okay? But um, I've definitely been guilty of it in the past. Now, what I would say is the reason you would get in touch with the recruiter is probably because you've seen a role on LinkedIn or a job advertising somewhere else. You can see their details and then you email or you call them and you get nothing. Uh, it's soul destroying. And I, I can only imagine how annoying. It must seem, right, there's this ignorant git that I've taken the time to write to and doesn't even have the decency to write back. Mm -hmm. um, the reality is, one job, and I did one earlier, I got, I got 60, 66 applications in three hours, okay? Now, I'm a human, I'm one person, I'm writing back to everybody and I have to arrange calls with, with everyone, right? That, that's actually, if you imagine everyone wants maybe 10 to 15 minutes of, my, of, of time, right, because that's, what it takes in order to, you know, have a good call, discuss your job, discuss what you've done, discuss what the role is, and see if you're qualified. But there's, is there enough time in the week for one person to be able to do that? No, right. But this is where I've kind of defined out and what I was leaning on in the previous question. It's surrounding yourself with recruiters that you're going to be your your trusted advisor and you can kind of rely on. Like, oh dear, I think I'm seeing you from working together over the years and we're now at a stage where you can just send me a whatsapp with one word and yeah. you'd, like, we're, we've kind of got that unison communication right but yeah. it took it would have taken me and you maybe a year to build that right it Absolutely. took a it took a while but we got there 
and now we're friends, right? Um, now, I'm, I think I've got a pretty solid reputation for my responses and coming back to people, but that's your job to kind of work on that with the recruiters that you want to work with, right? And they're human beings. They're not, no, most of us are, are good fun, right? We all have good personalities, a bit of banter. Um, and they're the ones that you want to you wanna work with. Sadly, there are bad recruiters, but this doesn't mean they're not worth working with. Bad ones will ignore you. They'll maybe even write back, I don't have anything, I'll call you when I need you. And that's the, one of the most irritating things you can hear, right? Mm. But it's that day when they do call and you're looking at a job and they've got that right thing. Yeah, it's just worth bearing that in mind about them. The lazy recruiters, the worst, right? The one that doesn't come back to you and their jobs are rubbish and they phone you about the wrong things or you or you do go for an interview and you never hear back from them, right? Yeah. Delete, don't speak to, don't work with. So, so, sorry they exist in the first place, unfortunately, okay? But it'll take you a wee while, right? Um, I'm going to help you. I'll give you the details once I'm speaking to you all individually of a few people that I would recommend, right? But I can't swear by them. They've got their own businesses. They work for their own companies. Okay. But it's normally because they're either lazy, um, their style isn't to respond unless they need you, or yeah, that's that's really or you and then you find a good one, right? That's about as much as I can say on that. Sorry it happened. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ian. So this next question, I'm just going to uh, give a bit of context around it because. Um, um, he says, what would you say a good KYC CV should look like? And the reason why I want to put context around it is you did mention something. You said um, sometimes, you know, within three hours, you could get 60 CVs to review. So uh, do you, how does that work? Do you go through each CV before you make a determination to say, oh, this candidate is the one? Or are they keeping, or how, how does that work? Um. Yeah, yes, yes, I do, but the CV doesn't necessarily make me like sway me, I guess, on whether I should or shouldn't speak to somebody. Okay, oh. now what? Um, there, there are CVs. I'll, I'll always get back to them. I'll be clear on that. But there are CVs that look worse than others. Okay, so let's say you do contracting and you do a three-month role, then another three-month role, and then your CV is just filled with maybe. 10 different institutions over the period of three years, right? 10 jobs in three years, that's mental, okay? And unfortunately, you've got a question, was there, was there an issue with the person's work? Do they just move for maybe five or 10 pounds per day? It doesn't look good for a client because they think they're not gonna get um, the longevity out of the person that they would desire. And also there's there's questions on the person's quality and that's just from the offset. So make sure your any role you're taking on has a bit of longevity in it and that you can, or or that it's a rolling rolling contract. Okay. You want you want a minimum of, of, of six months in each role when you're starting out. Okay. Now what makes a what makes a good C what does a good C V look like? Let's get let's get into this. So um firstly, your when you're building your profile, don't copy and paste the job spec for the role that you just never put a job spec. It's the first thing that I'll look at and I'll see that it's a job spec. Okay, so never do a copy and paste job. What you want is bullet points. Um, now, th I'm assuming this is um, this is basically based on any role that you've done, okay, or a KYC role. What I'm about to say. So, but you want bullet points and paint an end-to-end -end story of all the roles that you've been doing, okay. So if we're going to use KYC as an example, I want to see onboarded clients in the first instance. What exactly, what checks that you performed on them, where you got the information from, what you use the information for, okay? All of that one line after each other. If you want to look really good, state the numbers that you were targeted to while doing KYC. And a lot of roles, they'll ask you to do three cases per day, okay? Do four and put that in your CV. Set yourself apart and make yourself look great, okay? Mm. And state the systems that you do. Sorry, state the systems that you use. So traditionally, you'll use WorldCheck for screening. You'll use um, like Bloomberg, Thomson Reuters for checking different pieces of information on what's happening in the market. You'll use internal systems, perhaps maybe Salesforce as a CRM. Each yeah. company tends to 
like there's there's only so many systems and there's a lot of different companies so a lot of them use the same stuff and it puts you in an advantageous stage um and you requires less training so make sure you put your systems on there then make sure you put the projects that you were involved in okay it might have been something simple like maybe that you tested a different process or a way of doing kyc get it on there sets you sets you apart and any change that you were involved in that links in the projects so change can be anything that is simple to uh install we implemented a new kyc tool just say what part you played you tested it you tried it out get it on there shows that you got involved that you were happy to take on extra work um which you would encourage so that's that that's good that's good thank you very much ian okay so the next question is an inter interview and this person says i get scared at every interview is there any tip to help me overcome this yep um right well it's easy to say don't so i'm not going to say that um but like do, do, do i get scared when i go to an interview a wee bit right but then i'm what my advice to myself is right look at yourself in the mirror and ask you what the heck am i what am i scared of I am not going to die, right? That's the worst thing that can happen to anyone. Nothing bad can really happen, right? The worst thing that can happen is that you, you get flustered. <laughs> you start to fumble yeah. your words. My God, everyone does, okay? And then I want you to also, so don't let those types of things stress you, right? It's natural to feel nervous. Nervous is a good thing, right? That means you want it. So use those nerves to your advantage. The interviewer, They'll be doing, and there's a chance that maybe you're their first interview. They'll be nervous. They're interviewing 20 to 30 different people, and all of them want to do better than the interviewer. They want to impress them. The interviewer might not know the answers to some of the things that they're asking to the level the candidates are giving them, right? So just yeah. bear that in mind. It makes you a wee bit more confident knowing, I want to go in and have a, give everyone an easy ride here. Enjoy it, okay? Bear in mind, the interviewer is hiring for a role. They don't want you to fail, right? So don't go in thinking that they're going to be there in order to catch you out, okay? They're dying to find someone that can do the job. So you're actually in a good position going into any interview, okay? Then this is where, you need, this is the most important. Prep, 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 prep. I can't say it enough. That means any company you're going to work for. Yes, you can go and read their website. That's only going to be so useful, okay? Use the, put it into Google, what's happening in Santander. I'll bring you up some articles that will be in the news. Find something, yeah. find something different that nobody else will have thought of. And that's why I wrote just be memorable, right? Whenever you're able to mention something that's maybe going on within the company or something that's maybe changed within sanctions or something that's maybe changed within KYC policy or the AML directive, anything, you can quote that. My God, you're going to look great, right? I'll not forget you and it'll set you apart. Yeah. And then the last one, interesting question all right um do you know that what that this is the, the rule number one never ever ever ask what the working hours are okay that's uh never the word of advice don't ask it it's just not a it never looks good okay but where you can get some interesting questions is you've got a human being in front of you who has done a lot of work in order to get to the position that they're in chances are they're going to be on linkedin okay but what people love talking about is themselves. So think about a good, interesting question that you can maybe get something from yourself. Ask them how they maybe got into that position. Maybe they just moved up into management. Or how about asking them how you find the management now that you've just moved up, right? Something that will make it really open and memorable to them, right? Something quite, something quite thoughtful, okay? Not just, don't think of the obvious stuff. So the nerves, come. Calm them down. The other one is, if you've got a recruiter, speak to them five minutes before you go into the interview. Let them get you laughing, get you get you talking, chill out. It's the easiest thing to do, okay? And if you haven't got a recruiter, phone your mate, phone anyone that you can just to have a normal human conversation with. And then you'll go in that wee bit more confident. But genuinely, you've nothing to worry about. That manager wants you to get the job. That's good. That's good. Just on the last point, so just out of curiosity now, um, you said uh, looking at a hiring manager on LinkedIn. Don't mm -hmm. you think that would look, would you think that would feel creepy? <laughs> I'm just no. saying. No? Yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah, um, no I, I really don't. And actually, any hiring manager that, that I've dealt with, where someone's taking the time to go and check out to see who they are and what they've done, 
they've really liked that. Right? Okay. There's nobody that I've met that would say that person's a creep. That's just not it's just not a thing, mate. That's the thing. Like they actually really like the fact that they've taken the time out to go and check yeah. out their out their background. Take the interest in what they've done, right? That's yeah. the thing. And that's what that's what sets people apart. So yeah. no, never never think LinkedIn's creepy. It's there for professional purposes. That's its use. Not like Facebook, not like the other ones. I'm, I'm not very social media friendly. But it's um it's there for professional purposes, so use yeah. it. Yeah, actually, to be honest, I think you're right, because um, there was an interview I went for one time. Uh, and just before the interview, I just look up this individual who was going to who was going to interview me. And I just realized that actually we we worked in three different organizations together. But he there you go. Him. So when we go into the interview, we were just talking about the organization and not even about the role. And I got a job, you know, so I think it's. it's yeah. Good. yeah. Now, mate, like imagine like the. So it's a blessing, right? Because imagine going like back in the day when you were going for interviews, you get a name in an email and you have not the first clue who you're going to see. You've just got maybe a a Brenda or an Olu or a Stephen or whatever, right? You just got a name sitting there. God knows what it is. <laughs> Nowadays, you can actually go, right, who is this person and what have they done, right? You can go and find all that out. Find out yeah. what they're into. You'll find sports stuff on there, things that they're interested in, who they follow, right? You might yeah. have some more comparison than you think. Yeah, true. Great. Okay, thank you. So the next one I think is on salary. Um, this person has asked, what is a good salary, or a good starting salary, or a day rate for KYT analysts? Yep. Um, for a graduate, uh, it's 25 grand. Um, for someone maybe with experience where they've done some similar forms of onboarding, but not directly for financial services, they can get, a, they can get 30, but those are, those are decent salaries to get started on. Day rates are more lucrative. Um, just simply because you don't get the benefits of holidays, et cetera, with them. Okay. You just literally get the day rate. It's a money, it's a money job. Okay. It's a good starting point, 120 pound per day, but you can get up to 150 in your first role. But okay. it, it should, and it shoots on the day rate side. It will shoot up relatively quickly. Okay, brilliant. So, and, and this question is just a follow up. It says, uh, "What is the typical salary or day rate for KYC analysts with a two years experience?" Yeah, yeah. On the salary, it'll be about forty to forty-five k, and then day rate. This is where it's. This is um. So there's, you'll see a big difference there: one hundred and fifty and two hundred and fifty pounds a day. That's pretty significant. Um, it'll all come down to what the company is that you're working for and what the what the program is, okay? So if it's a small FinTech work from home, right, they're probably going to want to go a wee bit budget and go, no, well, we can just get them at 250, sorry, at 150. Yeah. Where if it's a bank and they want you maybe to come into the office two, three days a week, you'll get that wee bit more. But it's... um. It's on a sliding scale. It'll come down to the like, if the organisation's got a bit of cash, they'll pay a wee bit more to get analysts. But um, yeah, that's why there's a wee bit of a difference there. But there's variables that come into it. Okay, makes sense. Um, this other question says, do I? How do I know when I am being underpaid? Well, ask ask your recruiter. It's the only way to do it, right? Or we're not gonna we're not joking around i guess contractors talk right if you're doing kyc in one bank and your mate's doing kyc in another bank and he's getting 50 quid an extra 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 more than you per day or on a higher salary and you're doing the same rules then you've got to ask yourself am i just working for a bunch of cheat skates right why is this and your chances are maybe you are or maybe that other person just got lucky right underpaid is when you're doing a role with more experience and you shouldn't be doing it and you're you've got more too much experience but you're getting and you're working in said role right so you've got three years experience but you're doing 30k well yeah. one they should have raised your pay and if they've got and if they do and if you ask for more and they don't give it to you then you need to move to a different job that's when you that's when you know your job search has to commence yeah makes sense Makes sense. Yep. Just talking about um, 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 having a lot of experience and doing the job you're not supposed to. I think that's the follow-up on this question. 
And he says, yeah. can I be overqualified for KYC analyst role? Um, so I've, I've answered that very literally, I guess. So yeah. Yeah. if you're, if you're, so I guess the answer is actually no, you can't be, right? So if you've got the skills to do KYC and you're happy to go and just do an analyst role whenever you could do something a bit more senior, but you're happy to take it on, then no, you can't be overqualified, right? It's up to you whether you want to go for something or not. However, the the other side to that is picture maybe you don't get brought forward for the role despite having the experience. Well, that's why I wrote that. The hiring manager might want someone relatively junior so that they can put the time into training them. Okay? So whilst that may come across as you're overqualified, it might actually just be that the manager wants something different. And you know what? That's fine. Right? But So yes and no. Okay, brilliant. So I think this you've also answered this question. I mean, the KYC analyst paid according to the level of expertise. So I'm just going to skip this one um, yep. because you already answered it in a way. Um, so the next one is, what else can, it, can I do besides being a KYC analyst? Yeah. Well, so let's just break that down into KYC sets as part of what's called first line, which is financial crime operations, okay? Yeah. Within the first line, there are a bunch of different work streams, okay? KYC is a nice starting point for moving into what I've listed there. I would always encourage everyone to start with, with KYC. However, moving from there, you can move into transaction monitoring quite quickly. You can do um, anti-money laundering investigations. Whenever your investigations prove that there's evidence for fraud or money laundering, you must file a SAR report with the NCA. And that's that yeah. job, which is actually investigating to make sure it is a SAR and then filing said SAR with the NCA. Then there's the, um, the screening side to it, which is um, a bit laborious, but it's, it's a good job, okay? Yeah. It will be screening entities to see if they're subject to sanctions or if they're politically exposed. Yep, yep. those are the different ones. If you're going to ask me what my favourite one is out of them all, um, which you were, which maybe you were or weren't, I'm going to answer it anyway, buddy. Uh, transaction monitoring is, my, for me, the most interesting. That's where you get the deep dive investigations into yeah, where the money's going, what's it being used for. It's, for me, that one's the most fun. Yeah, that's an interesting area, to be honest. Okay. Um, can a KYC analyst work as a compliant analyst? Um, you can use KYC to get into compliance. You can't. You can't. Um, so, but you wouldn't qualified compliance analyst after just doing KYC. You would need to be working in an organisation having done KYC, then working with the compliance function and mm. applying for an internal role, and then taking a liking to you, moving you over and training you up on compliance regulations and the various roles within compliance, like monitoring, testing, etc. okay? But it's unlikely that, um, that you would have the skills from doing KYC to do pure compliance, as it's seen in the bank, okay? Yeah, yeah. 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 they're very difficult. Okay, thank you. So this question is, how easy is it to get into financial crime then? Yeah, well, me, I was saying to it earlier, it's just, it's, it's really competitive, right? And I guess it's with people coming through from university and people wanting to move into it, it's, it'd be, I'd be lying if I said it was easy, but there are a lot of jobs, okay? So that's where I was mentioning earlier, it's your, it's your hunger will get that job. Okay, how many, how, how, how hard are you willing to pursue it, right? Um, it's the most um, financial crimes, the protection for an institution, right? You get thousands of people every year wanting to get into it. So it's hard, right? But it happens and thousands of people get jobs every year. Um, yeah. So you just have to have faith in yourself and back yourself to get there. And you, and you will do it. Sure. Okay. okay, thank you. So the next question is, can a KYC analyst um, work as a compliance analyst? I think we already mentioned this. Um, did that one. No. Yeah, we did that one. Um, why do some recruiters request for reference before an interview or before offering a job? 
And the person then went on to say, am I obligated to provide this information? Okay, um, so the reasons they'll want a reference, so I like to do it, okay? Um, and that might be to check to make sure with your previous hiring manager that you did well, right? That's all, just to, it makes my job actually a lot easier. So picture this, I'm going to represent you with one of my clients. I can put their CV in front of you and say, yeah, Olu's great, just take my word for it. Or I can go in and say, yeah, here's Olu's CV. And here's a reference from Olu's previous employer. Look what he said about him. He's great. You're right. So that's, yeah. that, puts it, that puts people in an advantageous state. Now, that's the best reason for getting one. Second reason might be people like me who do contracts recruitment. Um, I, like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to have to deal with 100 jobs, right? That means I have to do vetting and screening on 100 different people. Um, it's a heck of a lot easier if I get all that done right at the start rather than doing it right at the end. All right? Mm -hmm. It's purely just for my ease, right? But one thing you do want to be careful of, and this is where I mentioned earlier about trusting, trusting your recruiter, or if you just find that there's some old rogue that you don't really know whether they're going to get you a job or not, probably worth parting ways with them. They may want those references, not to help you, but in reality, it's to phone your old hiring managers to see if they've got any jobs that they can fill. That's going to be down to your own ability to make that judgment call on what that individual really wants the reference for. Is it to help you? Is it to help themselves to get, make their life easier, which is fine, by the way? Or is it just a, for their own gain? Okay. But that's why they do it. Giving you a very, very honest view of recruitment right now, aren't they? <laughs> okay. I think the other question is um, on um, IR35. So what, what is your take on inside and outside IR35? <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Um, it's going to be, well, the market changed. There was two ways of contracting two years ago. You could use a limited company, which was very advantageous from a tax perspective. However, the regulation changed last April, which meant that uh, in order to use a limited company to do contracting, you would have to pass what's called a CEST, um, and that's a test, and that will assess to see if you actually qualify for an outside role. There are... The reality is going to be that KYC, if we're just going to use that, and the majority of rules within fin crime, in fact, are going to be inside from here on in. Um, so it's worth just embracing that you'll either use an umbrella company or you'll be PAYE. However, there are ways to be outside. Okay, The test is that your role has deliverables against it, that you've got no supervisor, and that you're allowed a substitution. And that means maybe that your, your mate can work in your stead on a certain day. Well, that's not going to happen in KYC because they're hiring you to do the job. Okay, so that side's eliminated. However, there are some consultancies, I'm not one of them, that um, will put the test back onto you for you to test yourself to work for them. And in those instances, which there's very few of, you can work outside. But to be honest, guys, it's ten times, going to be 10 times easier for yourselves just to embrace the inside world from now on in and accept that yeah. all rules are going to be inside. Yeah, true. Okay, thank you very much. So I'm going to open the floor now for everyone. Um, if you've got a question, um, please feel free to unmute yourself and go for it. So I'm just going to keep the tab at five minutes just so we don't keep Ian too long on the call and we've got a lot of um, um, areas within KYC we need to cover. Yeah, anyone's got a question? Any question from anyone? Oh, I think so. Have I talked enough to answer everything, Ole? Sorry? Have I talked enough to answer everything, maybe? maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, actually, a couple of people have got their hands up. Bear with me one minute. I'm just gonna... okay. yeah, go for it if I unmute you, or you can just drop me a message in the chat, please, then I will unmute you. But I've unmuted everyone now, so feel free to unmute yourself and ask the question. Hi, Hi yeah, go for it. Hello. Hi, hey, man. Okay, yeah, thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. Um, You're welcome. Yeah. 
I just want to ask, is it possible for recruiters to use whatever you have on LinkedIn to judge your interview steps or something like that? So is it possible for me to look at your LinkedIn to judge to see your, your caliber, what you're like? Is that what that means? Yeah, because I actually went for an interview with KPMG. Uh, past the first stage, second stage, I did very well. The uh -huh. answer the question because I kind of covered it when I was preparing. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, when I got my feedback, they said I didn't make it. But later on, I found out that um, KPMG they been to my LinkedIn profile, you know. To check, I don't know what they were checking. To be honest, and I, I guess there were some disparities in my profile. Well, is there? Well, let's let. Well, I'll answer it quick. Is there anything wrong with your LinkedIn profile, mate? Do you think is it was there, did, did any of the feedback make sense, or do you think it might have been a bit of a? Uh, they, they, obviously, they didn't give spoof. me feedback. They only told me I didn't make it, but I was wondering where you know I faulted. I, I just couldn't tell where you where fell I, down. Yeah. Yeah, well, you mate, you don't. Sadly, places do so many interviews. They or they just don't give feedback to anyone individually anymore, and uh, that's part of the recruiter's job to actually push to get that. All right, so you should push your recruiter to get you proper feedback because getting nothing's no use. No, you're um, you're un unless there's something awful on your LinkedIn, right? Um, it'll not affect your your job interview. The only thing that LinkedIn would show is if it doesn't match what's on your CV. So if there's two different two different versions there, maybe there's an extra role or something missing or the, the, the dates don't lap, overlap. Um, you want the CV and the LinkedIn to be a mirror of each other. Okay. That would be the only thing that would maybe affect that. Okay. Okay. Okay, but okay. it's uh, the same it, Hello, yeah. Yeah. yeah, mate, how are you doing? You all right? Yeah, uh, thank you for everything you have said today. Uh, I just have a question on um, uh, if it is um, compulsory that you must have your KYC experience from the UK, for instance, if you are here in UK now and you want to work here. Because like myself, I have a KYC experience in Africa, Nigeria to be precise. I've written yep. a lot of um, applications that is, I've submitted my CV in a lot of places I've never been called. The few yep. ones that I spoke, you know, never got back to me. Yep. So, um, yes, it's, a, it, it's more helpful if you've got UK experience. However, no, you don't need pure UK experience to get a KYC role, right? Um, fact of the matter is, if I put you into a, and the KYC role, can you do the job? Yes. Do you need to learn some UK regulations? Yes. Right. However, see the vast majority of people at entry level that are going for a KYC role, they won't have any UK KYC experience either. All right. So they're, they're going to be learning on the job just like everybody else. So it's just, like I said, it's just going to be a matter of keep going with the applications. Okay. And you will get the role. It's, um, if anything, if you've got KYC experience, you know the process, you know what the role's doing, you know why you're doing it in the first place, you're in a better position than the vast majority of people going for those jobs in the UK. Sadly, it's just applied to the ones for the, for the ones you didn't get. But you know what? Move on. We'll go for the next ones. It's resilience, right? But you're in a good position if you've got some experience doing it, Billy. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other question? Yeah. In I think you're saying something, but we can't hear you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear Hello. you. Hello. Hi, Ian. Hey, mate. Uh, yeah, when you um, spoke about uh, what one, uh, what you would say a good CV should look like, you mentioned yep. uh, stating the number of cases uh, one has worked. And also yep. uh, uh, the projects one has worked on, and I'm wondering, uh, is that is that really uh, uh, a difference between both ends? Sorry, say that again, that last bit again, there, buddy. I didn't quite get the last bit. 
Is there a difference? Okay, you, you say, yeah, is there, is there a difference between the number of cases I have worked and the number of projects I've worked on? Is it, isn't it the cases that feed into the projects? Oh, yeah, um, sorry, I'll, I'll elaborate quickly on that. So the cases is the KPIs that you're set, okay? So that's that, so in a in a KYC role, you might be told I want you to onboard three people per day, okay? Put that in your CV that you always hit your KPIs by hitting your case numbers is um, a ma like it's a massive selling point for yourself. The project is more the extra work that you might be involved in while doing the KYC role, okay? So there's always changes being made to processes of KYC. Policies always getting updated. There's different systems getting implemented. And there's always the opportunity for the analysts who are doing the role to put their hand up to say, can I help? Can I do something? Can I do more? Okay? Um, when you can get involved in those projects and put them on your CV to show your involvement in the extra tasks that you completed, that you, you, you set yourself apart, okay? So it's two, they're two different things, that's all. Oh, thank you. That helped me, yeah. Good. Okay, brilliant. Any other question? I think we actually overrun the five minutes. Any other question? I think I'm just going to take one more question, then um, we can wrap this up. Yeah, yeah, I'll just need two minutes, Olu, to offer a service I want to provide for everybody at the end as well, please. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, um, any other question? um okay thank you very much ian so the floor is you're yours. welcome yeah right guys um i'm a i'm a recruiter so what i'd like to do all who's a very 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 good friend of mine is help you all out so if um ollie if maybe you could just give my my email address out to everyone and what i'd like to do is and it's probably going to be easier for me to do this after five o'clock um i'll spend 20 minutes with each of you privately okay and what I'm going to do is look at your LinkedIn and enhance them, run through CVs with you and make sure they're what, what, what they should look like. And then also teach you how to use LinkedIn, build up a network and build up a contacts list and then help you put together your first message where you're contacting someone yourself. OK, um, it would be 20 minutes to half an hour with each of you. And I'll, uh, we, can, we can get started on that as soon as, as, soon as you want to. I'll do it in the, the order in which you reach out to me. Okay, um, and then also we can talk about my my hundred jobs, um, and I'll run you through what they are, and uh, we'll see if they're going to be of interest to you. Okay. Uh, Ian, when is the job? When is the job kicking off? The hundred roles. Uh, be probably so we we'll sign off the S W probably mid May, I'd say. Thirty. There's one one program is a fintech that need to be clear thirty thousand sanctions alerts, so that will be. Wow, um, level one, yeah, level one screening. And then the other program is at a crypto firm where they need to remediate 7 million customers, which is going to last quite a long time. And, yeah. and that, yeah. that's for, yeah, that's the big one. So within the, both of those roles, there's room for, you know, entry level, um, more of that just kind of probably doing more screening than anything else, but it's a pretty good start, right? To get a, get the opportunities whilst they're there. All right. But yeah. we could do a bunch of things on the calls that I'll do with you all. All right. But anyone that's on this call, anyone that wants to reach out to me and take that take that up, then go for it. Okay. I'd love to help you out. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Ian. Um I would share your email at the end of the session um with the guys yeah. and they'll reach out to you. And then everyone please reach out to my LinkedIn yeah. page. Thanks for yeah. yeah. All right guys um all right, well, um, thank you very much for having me. That was a Thank privilege you. to speak to you. Take care. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. Thank you.